She was furious with Dante and Lulu when I got sent to prison. Dante for being the catalyst and Lulu for taking his side. And nobody holds a grudge tighter or closer than my mom does. Right, so you say. But what I'm saying is that people can grow and people can change. Yeah, well, I heard you on the phone. You're ordering very expensive furniture, and aren't you supposed to be broke? Look, Brooke, just admit it. My mom hired you to break up Dante and Lulu, didn't she? Okay. I'm going to put this one. Um, Michael, I know that you just got out of prison. OK, I get that. You have murder charges. You have cover-ups. It makes perfect sense to me why you would think that everything was a conspiracy. But just think about this for a second. It's kind of crazy. It's really far out, isn't it? Nope. It makes perfect sense. My mom is relentless when she set on payback. She probably made you an offer you can't refuse. And you know what? I don't know. Maybe you have your own reasons for wanting to hurt Dante. Whoa, I got to give it to you, Brooke. No grass grows under your feet. Working Michael isn't going to further your progress with Dante. You still have to get through me. I'm not budging. How is he? Well, he caught a bullet. Dead center chest, point blank range. So did I, and I'm alive. Mind you, my mother showed up, called the ambulance. I don't know how long Johnny was lying in the street bleeding. Well, there's extensive internal damage. And despite how successful surgery went, there's an excellent chance Johnny could die. Which basically means your father is up the river. Not a paddle in sight. You got good news. So you were hoping to question Johnny? Uh, yeah, I need to get a statement from him as soon as he can make one. Well, that might be a while. Johnny's not in good shape. Yeah, I heard you. Um, unconscious the whole time? He woke up briefly in the ER. You say anything? I, I said we'd fix him up. He wished me luck. Anything else? He had asked me to call your mother and then changed his mind. All right, well, I won't touch that one for obvious reasons. Did he talk to anyone else? Ethan. Y you spent some time with Johnny, right? Some, uh, mostly when Johnny's with Ethan. I mean, I'm certainly no authority. Well, maybe you have an insight and you just don't realize it. What are you asking me, exactly? What does your gut tell you about Johnny? Uh, well, he's reckless, OK? Johnny hates Sonny with a blinding passion, and, and that turns him cold and scary. But he also has a soft side, too. I've seen him with Ethan, Olivia, Christina, OK? And, and despite all the inconvenient mob stuff, I think Johnny's a good guy. Yeah, they don't come any better. How is he? He's critical. I'll leave you alone with him. Thank you. Thanks for your help. You just couldn't listen, could you? I know I should have tried harder to get through to him. Oh, no, no, you're not going to blame yourself for this. He chose the path that got him here. I don't really want to hear that right now, OK, Dante? I need you to fight. OK. You're going to get through this? I'm right here with you. So what are you, the conversation police? Look, Lulu, you want me to write this down because I can leave this post-it on your door. Michael's my cousin, too. And I don't need your permission to talk to him. So if I want to talk to him, I get to talk to him. I'm not even sure why you're here, because if you and Dante are so in love, then there's nothing I could do to possibly ruin it, right? Right. That is my point. Well, Dante was my friend long before you. And he will be my friend long after you're gone. Oh, OK. So you missed the part where I said I'm not going anywhere. No, actually, it's just that those are the famous words of all of his ex-girlfriends. Wow, Brooke, you really are such a two-faced bitch. Yeah. Anything you want to do about it? OK, guys, look, you don't want to fight about Dante and Kelly. Let's just all calm down, OK? <laughs> and, and Brooke, why don't you just do what Lulu says? Just, just back off. I've thought about it. And my answer is. No. I'll see you around then. I knew this day was coming. And I tried, and I tried to warn you. And I know you heard me, because you couldn't really miss it. I was shouting it so loud from the rafters. But, but you just didn't care. Sonny was determined to kill you. 
and you were determined to make them try. There was just no way that this was going to end well for either one of you. And here we are. You just never gave a damn about your own life. You know, I play the piano. Yep. He's wonderful. You know, real, a real artist. I'm not kidding. You should ask him to play for you sometimes. It's just so beautiful. It'll break your heart. That's the John Zakar that I know. That's the one that I get to spend time with. The sensitive artist. Expressing his whole life's pain. Fingers to keyboard. Look, Mom, I get that you love Johnny, and he may be as wonderful as all the things you're saying he is wonderful at, but uh, his life is total chaos. Okay, and once this sunny thing blows over, I guarantee you, within two days, he'll be having a death match with somebody else. You deserve better. There is no better. Can I talk to you for a minute? But he's not going anywhere, neither are we. I just want your attention for a minute. so full that my throat closes up. And getting older has given me a greater appreciation of who you are, okay? And a deeper awareness of just how lucky I am to have you as my mother. And I know you sacrificed everything for me. <laughs> Being a mother was not a sacrifice. It was the greatest thing that I will ever do. And I loved every second of it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love all the praise, but where are we going with this? You deserve the best of everything. Okay? And I just don't think you're gonna get it from this guy. Honey, I appreciate the sentiment and where you're coming from, I really do. But me and John, it's just not your call. Okay, you're a grown man now with a life of your own, and it's time for me to have a life of my own, too. Okay, and I get to choose who's in it. And I choose John. And I, I am really sorry if that makes you unhappy, but you know what? I tried it your way. I did, I pushed him away, and I gave him ultimatums, me or the mob, me or Sonny, the vendetta against Sonny, and you know what? All that got me sad and lonely and, and missing the only man that ever really made me happy. So now it's not on me to judge John and judge his choices. It's just on me to love him. Well, I guess that's that. Yeah. Sunny, I guess. Oh, freaking Sunny. I guess I gotta know the truth, huh? Did Sunny really shoot John unarmed? Honestly, Ma, at this point, I have no idea. You wanted to see me? Any progress? Well, I looked over the file. Nothing evidentiary indicates that Johnny was armed. Johnny had a gun. He pointed it at me, and I shot him in self-defense. I know I, that's I, your I, story, and you're sticking to it, but there's nothing to back that up. I went to the hospital to question Johnny, but he was unconscious. That was surreal, really, seeing him lying there with the exact same wound I had when you shot me unarmed. Totally different situation. I don't think so. Someone got in your way, you fired first, and regretted it later. You were unarmed. 
I knew it. I pulled the trigger anyway, and I'll regret that for the rest of my life. But I'm going to tell you again, and I'll tell you again and again and again. Johnny stopped me on the street, pointed a gun right at me, and I shot him in self-defense. You keep saying that. The problem we have here is that I don't believe you. You know, I had to find myself wanting to believe you. I went to the hospital to question Johnny, hoping he'd back you up. That was wishful thinking, but I thought I'd indulge. Then my mother shows up. With this quiet, dignified pain, like she knew the drill. Like she knew she had to stay strong for Johnny. And then I realized it's because she'd been there before. At my bedside, when her son was shot, unarmed, point blank. Totally different situation. No, it only, totally different situation. That's only in your mind, is it? You just decided to shoot once again a guy who couldn't defend himself. No, I'll never forget the look on your face that day. The coldness in your eyes, the grim resolve, the lack of any emotion whatsoever. All I have to do is think of that day, and I know you could have shot Johnny unarmed without even blinking. You think I didn't learn anything from shooting you? You're wrong. I learned one of the biggest lessons of my life. I thought I had good reason for killing you that day. It was the right decision for the business. You'd gotten in too far, you knew too much, you were a cop, you were working me, and you were working my family. What I didn't know is that I would end up shooting my own son and I, I, I thank God every day that you survived, even though you hate me. But here's the lesson that I learned. It has to be an even playing field. If there's a, a man standing in front of you and he's unarmed, it does not mean that he's a threat. He should not be met with lethal force. And I said I would never do that again, and I didn't do it with Johnny. He drew on me. I took my gun out, and I shot him to save my own life. Now, I'm asking you to believe me, not as a cop, but as my son. 